Welcome to Sailing Vessel Seeker. Today we're working on a shower sink bilge pump. We're going to put one of these in both heads. There's our sink and there's our shower pan down here. We've got to collect the water from them and pump it out of the boat. Now we already got our wastewater tank for the toilet and our siphon loop for the toilet and this pump we're going to put in. We're going to combine them through a Y valve with check valves too so when you pump there pumping sewage is turned on it's not pumping it up through the floor drain in the shower pan uh, that'd be gross so there'll be a check valve to stop that the big nilla pump though that has to pump out the shower and the sink and I think it's going to go down in there I also have to reconstruct a support underneath the shower pan here that will hold our floors here our floors are all uh, epa tiles that can come out supported by structures like this so I had to take one out here that went across this way because obviously this tank needs to come in and out so we're gonna rethink that make this tank easy to get in and out not that you would normally do that a lot but hey I just want a boat that's easy to get around in so these are hydraulic pipes and below that that pipe down there that's the shaft log that's where the drive shaft of the propeller goes through a little bit of standing water down in there yeah it's white from fiberglass grinding so that we want to keep that area dry probably put a little sump pump down there too I don't know your ideas on that maybe just a sponge to get that little bit of water airborne and let it dry out we're gonna need to stabilize this tank I think I'll put some foam underneath the edges of it just to give it a little lift off the paint down there and then something to hold it down probably from the steel that comes down this side that gives me a really tight 10 inches for a tank and they sell these uh, shower sink pump basins that have a pump inside of them they're all self-contained inside of a box so that if it backs up it backs up into the shower sink and then just overflow into your bilge it's a nice design but they're kind of small for the pump i want to use and here's the pump i want to use this is a harbor freight uh, sump pump it's a nice 110 volt design and it's got a float switch that's vertical so i like that i've used the float switches they're on the tether and they get jammed up and tied up to things a lot so i have a lot more confidence in this it comes on when it uh, touches the top and it shuts off when the weight goes back onto the bottom it's got an inch and a half discharge it can be reduced down to an inch and a quarter there and the water gets taken in through a pretty big screen i like that too they also pump a lot of water the downside is they are 110 volts so you know you got to have you Really, bilge pumps don't keep your boat from sinking. If you're thinking that, oh, we get a leak, we get our bilge pumps working, your bilge pumps can clean up the water once you stop the leak, but generally, you're not gonna find this size pump, or especially one of those little DC things, saving your boat, okay? To save a boat, you need a really big pump, because generally, uh, when boats are going down, you got a lot of water coming in. You got to take care of that issue first, then worry about the pumps. So this is our cargo hold area and, and those two corners and over there underneath the companionway and here, these are all built in sumps and they are designed just for these pumps. And yeah, a nine inch box be just fine for that. Yeah, that'll work well. And a lot of the boxes you buy have a uh, clear plastic top on them so you can actually look down inside and see what's going on. And they also come with a strainer of some sort to get hair out of the water because that can foul up a pump too. So we'll need to figure out something for a strainer. Now, if you're building tanks for a boat, the best thing to use is stainless steel, whether it be a sewage tank, sewage tanks, especially a water tank, even a little lift tank like this. Stainless steel is wonderful. Somebody asked, well, don't you have any stainless steel? No, I don't. I also don't have any gold either, so we're going to make do with aluminum. This is actually a piece left over from building our tender, so it's a 5086H116, which is a, that's its a hardening treatment, but it's a marine grade aluminum. So at least it's expensive aluminum. Or aluminium for all you others. Oh, nothing shines it up like that. At least pumps really are affordable, especially when you wait and buy them a few at a time with how many people you got in the 20 percent discount coupon okay I think I've changed my mind if I put the shower sink bilge pump on this side then I can access it along with the valves here and the pump and checking the level of the tank so this makes a lot more sense <laughs> just barely 
just let them sit out here and dry for a bit. You know when you watch what professional engineers do, it makes you feel better about your own mistakes because if they had just rotated the mount holes for this pump at 15 degrees, that screw wouldn't be lined up with this uh, port and I could actually fit a check valve in there without it colliding with that screw. That one's got a leak. You know, I like using this saw. It makes such a clean cut. You can readily see the hole that was a problem and you can follow it down as deep as you want to go. That'd be nice to have the sump bigger. I mean, the bigger the sump, the more water it has in it before it triggers the pump on and off. So you get less cycling of the motor. My hoses arrived today. This is the high dollar rare tan Centiflex uh, odor shield hose. It's made out of butyl, so it doesn't leak any gases through it. It's been tested and everybody raves about it. It's actually not too bad if you buy it in 50 foot uh, spool. Uh, the price comes down to something more reasonable, but it's still expensive stuff. And when it's not going to hold sewage, I'm going to use uh, just the PVC, and this is a reinforced core hose. It's good stuff too, but they tell you that it's only about six months before you can start smelling the sewage that's sitting inside of it. So you'd, if you had a system that flushed out all the sewage, you wouldn't have a problem, but that's not our system. We're going to have a check valve that's going to hold it in the line. And uh, it's PVC, and if you use PVC hard pipe, you're fine. It's just this flexible stuff that has a permeable layer to it. Even the clear PVC pipe doesn't bend as nicely as this uh, uh, Sandy Shield does, but this is expensive stuff. Uh, I have it in one inch, an inch and a half as well. You know, if I was being really cheap, what I would do is I would buy a lot less of the uh, expensive flexible stuff and I would put hard PVC pipe in it and just as little bit of this as I need to to get around tight spots. Now that would be a real pain in the ass, you'd have more fittings, but you'd probably come out a little cheaper. Well, we got to get this tank at the right location, so I'm going to try to figure out a foam will work underneath. Oop, too long. That's Too high now. Move the pump. After considering a list of possible candidates, Chandler focused on Winfield Scott. This way. I just love working with metal. It's so accommodating, you know. If you don't like what you did, then change it a little bit. Yeah, that's going to work fine. See, the bolts are going to unscrew from the all threads and push down on these doubler plates. Generous coat of never sees. We'll make sure that when we got to take it apart, it will actually still come apart. Otherwise, in saltwater conditions, things tend to corrode together and stay together. Now, yeah, the tank's going to want to move fore and aft, so I'm going to put a little bar here to prevent that. Well, I decided to give it another coat of paint just because it's not going to be an easy place to get to. So I ran some Scotch Brite over it to uh, roughen the surface up a bit, vacuum it out. Try not to use any water because I don't want any moisture in here. And then we just slap on another coat of paint. What do they say? They say one coat for dirt, and two for rust. Looks beautiful. Now we gotta go find something else to do. Like mount these. Oh, that is sweet. The uh, threads on these bungs are national pipe thread. So, the the free world standard. Man, that is tough hose. Oh, it's got a wire in it. And you know you bought some high dollar yachty shit when they wrap it in a wrapper, okay? Sewer hose with a wrapper because I don't want my the sewer tank hoses to have blemishes or rubs on them. They have to be perfectly white. Oh my God, they're already picking up dirt from my hands. I actually saw that as a complaint about this hose. It, it attracts dirt too much. It's like, shit. I even have tape over the print. 
maybe in August this wouldn't be necessary. You think butyl is really normally a really soft material, but not this stuff. And that's almost as far as I can get it. And uh, don't heat it up too much and don't put any grease or oils on it. Uh, I'm not, well, maybe it would work, but I'm not sure how it would interact with this stuff and I don't want it to rot in there. It's a wicked little wire that it leaves sticking out there. Every day more parts keep arriving and I have ordered these from like six different stores and I'm still not done. I still need to order more. And even when I think I got what I need, I go out there and I start arranging things and it's like, no, I could use a T here instead of, oh. so yeah, you start all over. Yeah, check this out. Different brand of fitting, same hose, right? Look at this. Just as easy as can be. So definitely need a clamp on that. And everybody's gonna ask me, are you gonna use double clamps on that? You should double clamp that. No, I'm not. That's something you do if this hose connects through hole or through the hull to the outside water at below the water line. That means this hose would have pressure on it from the outside at all times. So if it did come apart, you'd start flooding. This hose is only connected to a pump that pumps out of the hull through a fitting. So it's got to go up and over the loop and then back down. So if anything before that loop and the pump breaks, it doesn't make any difference. You got a little sewage in your boat, not, not you know, tons of seawater coming in. So it kind of depends on where it goes as to whether you put two clamps on or not. Several years ago, some viewer wrote me and offered me a deal on a whole bunch of hose clamps that he had. And I am glad that I bought every last one of them. So I have hose clamps out the yin yang out in the storage yard. They're all stainless steel and they're all good quality. And so even if they're a little too long, I can trim them down so that they work just perfect. A vacuum release valve is one of the parts that came in. It's a simple little gadget. It's just got a spring and a ball bearing at the top. So when the air pressure creates a vacuum in here, it pulls the ball bearing back down against the spring opens it up lets the water drain back so this is now an anti-siphon loop look inside here there's the spring there's the ball bearing down in there and it's actually adjustable because you can uh, thread this collar down and lock it in so that the spring isn't so tightly compressed oh, I need the bushing reducer it's on order holes. I want to put that out of the tank over there instead of on this side because that will free up this area because this is easy to get to. You can store bags and stuff down in here and they're right out from the toilet too so it actually is going to work out really good. And I need to add a fitting to this pan to drain the water through it. cut the hole it's over there so this is brass to steel so I'm using silicon bronze wire it never looks pretty when you're done but it grinds out just fine and there it is you can see the uh, silicon bronze around the fitting itself and then the steel out from that Foam runners down there are glued in, so I'll go wait for that to dry. And we can go ahead and start putting in the aft cabin stuff. Now there's a piece of all thread in here that's welded to this plate that's bolted to the wall of the bathroom here. And uh, what I did is I cut that stud off shorter so that I can take a cut off bolt and run it up through there. That'll make this thing completely uh, able to be disassembled. And that's one of the things I feel really strongly about in boats is that you ought to be able to take them back apart without having to use a chainsaw. Yeah, there you go. Good 
out, the hold down boats have to go in place first, then the beam. I mean, I had that bolt in there far enough. Yeah, that'll fit. Then I can tighten the bolts down, but with the bolts there, I can't get the tank underneath. So, noted. You know, it's going to be great because or on the water, we can just go back and look at an old video and say, oh yeah, that's how you got to do that. Okay, these are pretty much the same routine as the uh, aft cabin. You just screw the nut out and it presses down on the bar and pushes the tank into the floor. And I imagine that foam's going to crush once this has some weight in it and doesn't bang it around. But it's not a big deal just to come in here and tighten these up if they get a little loose and squirrely. I raised my tank a little bit, but I think my hole is big enough and still located all right for the hose to go through. But I think I'll get my plasma torch back out and cut a limber hole down there in the corner. It's just a hole that lets the water flow from one side to the other. That way we can get by with one bilge pump in here. So the idea is to get this pan at the bottom of the companionway to drain into a bilge tank along with the shower and the sink. And that way there's just one big pump in there that pulls it out. But there's always some stuff that gets around and everything and will get into the bilge. So there'll be another little pump that'll be down in the bilge and it'll just pump into the tank. So the next bigger pump will pump it on out. Well, I got my tank in here for the shower and sink drain. That's where I'd like it to go, but that pump is just too big. I mean, it fits the box, but it doesn't give me enough room for hoses and stuff coming in. I'm gonna have to cut it down just a little bit. So it's time to go shopping for a bilge pump, a small bilge pump. There's our box all mounted in. I got it so that the, uh, the water will enter over there. There's a screen in it, plastic, with a TIG rod used as a handle. And that collects uh, hair and your know, ring or whatever you drop down the drain. A small bilge pump, 1100 gallons per hour, will go down there in the bottom easily. And then it'll pump out the side and it actually pumps out below the screen. So it gives me a lot more area for the screen. I really like that. One of the best things I like about this is you can buy these online, but they're just plastic boxes. This one is sturdy and it won't ever break. So now it's off to the forward head and we do the same thing there. I don't want aluminum rubbing up against steel because it will vibrate a little bit and wear through the paint. So a piece of wood in there will act like a dampener. We got the intake from the shower and the sink, the discharge from the pump, and then a couple more hoses. One for a bilge pump in the cabin and another one for a drain for the companionway. You know, it all takes lots of time, but it's nice to have it custom done because then you get just what you need. Or if you're a tool junkie and you don't have a pair of these Nipix pliers, I highly recommend them. You know how the channel locks normally slide around? These have a little push button on them. They make a pair that don't have the push button, but I really like my pair with the push button best. Made in Germany, Nipix. If you're a tool junkie, you ought to have them. If you're not, ah, an old crusty monkey wrench does fine too. See, this is the pair that doesn't have the uh, push button. And the problem is, it's just like the old channel locks. It, you, you open it up and it accidentally slides to a new position. So you got to reposition it every time. And it's got to be just right. So I'm not crazy about these. That is tight. Boy, I like these tanks. This one too, just like the other one. You can use it as a step. So I'm happy to have the sump and the tanks locked down. So now we're just waiting on parts. And speaking of parts, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who donates to us through PayPal or Patreon or sends us a gift. It's very helpful, especially right now. Normally I sell some stock when I got to put some money into the boat, but with this COVID thing, that would be a horrible decision to do right now. So you're making it happen. I can still buy parts. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. And if you don't own any stock, consider doing that. It's a great investment. I mean, uh, it's so much better than uh, lottery tickets or going to the casino or uh, even Nipix pliers. I mean, right now you can buy oil stocks or travel stocks 
like I even bought a few shares of uh, oh, what's it called Carnival Cruise Line yeah I know <laughs> you know I keep telling people that it's most not for you it's try cruise line so I figure hey I might as well invest in cruise lines too so I have it $13 is what you pay for a share of Carnival Cruise Line right now it doesn't cost you but maybe a hundred bucks open an account and then you take that money and buy something like Carnival Cruise Line or you know uh, Exxon or Conoco they're all terrible right now and uh, but you know you look at it a year ago they were over three times what they're valued at right now and if you know we get past this corona thing we're gonna start driving our big SUVs again so it's not a bad idea just something for you to think about dreams are not always cheap this one is an expensive one but it takes just a lot of hard work and looking for you know the profits to come in a year or two not scratch it off and see what you own right now Para mi gente Con una pasión